Okay, so I'm with uh, your own uh, Jerome Yonker, uh, who's an industry consultant um, and who's a, a, a well-known participant um, in this conference and in the European bioplastics space. Uh, and Jerome, you're here with uh, Photonol. Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, Photonol, when they started, what they do? Sure, sure. So Photonol is a uh, essentially a startup that uh, uh, um, is a spin-out out of the University of Amsterdam. Um, it started in 2008. Um, what Photonol does is using what is probably the world's oldest uh, microorganism, the cyanobacteria, and modifying that uh, genetically um, so that it can produce valuable biochemicals. This bacteria is unknown to me. Where does it come from? Well, it's a bacteria that is uh, literally as old as the, as the world, okay. as the globe uh, itself. It's uh, one of the most simple and pure organisms uh, around. So it's a very old uh, organism. Now, um, by uh, just having the organism, that uh, doesn't uh, bring any value, but by modifying it, it does. So what Fortinal does is modifying it. Um, the technology is patented for many different uh, compounds, many different bio uh, chemical compounds. Um, the reason why we're here uh, this, uh, today is uh, because uh, recently we had a breakthrough uh, in our technology and we managed to make lactic acid out of uh, this cyanobacteria. And the basic process is um, we use the, the, the cyanobacteria and we let it grow by using sunlight and CO2. So it's, basic, it's, it's a basic photosynthesis uh, process uh, and the end product is a valuable biochemical like lactic acid and there's some byproducts in terms of biomass. Wow, now we've just been hearing the usual concerns that are expressed in this conference about the use of vacant arable land uh, to create a bio-based solution and, mm -hmm. and is it 1% or is it 0.02% whatever it's a contentious issue mm -hmm. uh, we've heard the EC basically flagging up the fact that there are going to be 9 billion people requiring to be fed by 2050 mm -hmm. and 75% of the available resources already being used it sounds as though there's pressure on an arable land-based uh, bio-based industry mm -hmm. you're effectively creating a bio-based solution uh, out of, well, I think your phrase was thick air, but anyway, clearly it's not a resource that's in short supply. Correct. You're totally correct. Actually, so we're using, uh, so we're not using any arable land. We're also no. using less space if you compare it to the same amount of product that you would have to make out of a traditional first generation, so for instance, uh, sugar beet or, or sugar cane. Mm -hmm. It's a direct conversion, and we're using CO2, so we're absorbing CO2 as well in the process. And this is, is a drop-in for, for PLA, effectively? It is. It is. Obviously, uh, a lot of work has been done from our side. A lot of work still needs to be done to bring this from the pilot into a demo, into a commercial scale type of operation. The hardware side of things, that's not so much of the issue because a photo bioreactor technology is available. It is really to scale up the technology. Right, and, and actually that was going to be my question because what, what are the physical limitations of scaling up? Mm -hmm. um, there aren't really, there aren't really. You, you need space, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you need uh, land, and uh, you have some. You may have some issues with the with the maintenance of the system. Uh, we are working on the on the contamination, which is a, a, a potential uh, risk uh, when you scale up the contamination. It's a closed loop system, so in principle, you should be able to manage that. Okay, and just to clarify, when you say we're looking for land, we're looking to land to build on rather than to use. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So you're looking a photobioreactor, as you can see here. This is uh, uh, basically transparent uh, tubes, um, so you need a space to capture the sunlight. It's a closed loop system, so also in terms of water use, if you compare it to traditional irrigation, it's basically a waterless system because it's closed loop. Now, when we talk to uh, the bio-based industry and we talk about uh, cost competitiveness with, with fossil fuel based 
uh, plastics, yes. and we talk about scaling up in that context, it's always volume of production. That doesn't appear to be the issue for you because uh, there's no resource limitation. So when scaling up is achieved, how will this compete on a cost basis with, let's say, PLA? Okay, so we've done uh, some uh, techno-economic uh, analysis. Obviously, we're looking at, uh, um, let's say, operationally a fairly, uh, you know, uh, uh, economic and, 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 and competitive uh, system. Um, the investment is one thing, of course, and, of, or, and the maintenance, like mm. I said before. But we've done our analysis, and we think we can be between 10 and 15 percent uh, more cost effective than currently is the case based on the traditional sugar route. That's fantastic. Um, where are you looking uh, to for the investment? Different sources. Uh, so far we've been uh, funded by uh, subsidies, grants, uh, but also ICOS Capital, uh, one of the early stage uh, investors. Um, we're now uh, looking at uh, next round investors. Um, we also have some grant programs uh, running, but, and that's also the reason why we're here at the conference, we are looking for industry partners, we are looking for uh, value chain partners that not only can bring us some of, you know, share with us some of the, the, the financial pain of developing these kind of uh, groundbreaking uh, technologies, uh, but also can add value in terms of downstream processing uh, of the actual PLA material or the lactic acid and then subsequently the PLA material. Your old colleagues from the, from the, um, from the arable land uh, resource-driven PLA sector, how do they feel about this? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, in the end, uh, whether you make... Um, uh, if you are in the PLA business, you want to sell PLA, uh, the end users in the plastics uh, business, they want to have bioplastics, but they don't want to have bioplastic that compete, competes with uh, the food chain. So if they want to sell their PLA, it better be from an alternative feedstock than sugar or uh, crops. Um, now, I know some companies are have some maybe some interests in the crops or in the in the sugar uh, value chain, some haven't. And in the end, the market will decide if it's cost effective, doesn't compete with the food chain, and it's bio-based and biodegradable, that's a pretty compelling story. Are you able to tell me how much investment you require? Well, for the first, or sorry, not for the first, but for the, for the, for the stage we're looking at now, so to go from the pilot to the demo, to set up a demo, uh, we're looking at between five and seven million. Okay, and then, which sounds definitely affordable, um, not by me, but then you get uh, beyond the demo, how long from there to commercialization and how much more funding? Well, looking at the demo stage, we, we think a setup of six to nine months, then running it, because we want to have the proof that the demo is running, so op all, take out, iron out all the operational issues. So the whole trajectory would be about two years, so 2017, 2018. So then in 2019, we would be, if everything goes well, sure. we would be um, ready to set up an industrial scale operation. Well, we've heard all sorts of, of inventive and innovative of solutions over the past few years at this conference, but I think this one that actually is coming literally, as Jerome says, out of thick air, has to be the most inventive of them all, and we wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Des. Thanks.